Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Thanks for being here. Tuesday, the 14th day of January, has been perfect, and it's also the last of it for a while. Believe it or not, all this gorgeous weather today that I hope you had to get out or got to be out in for at least a few moments is going to be followed by some winter weather. We are, in fact, under a winter weather advisory here shortly. And with that, we'll see the chance of an inch or less of the white stuff during the overnight hours. Your morning commute could be a bit dicey. We could see blustery conditions, visibilities reduced. It might make traveling during the overnight, specifically more towards the early morning hours, a difficulty. Then we'll talk about conditions thereafter that are not going to recover quite so much. In local headlines tonight, Sagittarius Police Chief Matthew Watson tells us of an unusual story that he literally stumbled onto last evening as he exited the Sagersville post office. A woman lying in the parking lot yelling for help. She had fallen. But someone, according to her statements to authorities, could have rendered her some aid, but instead chose to ransack her car as she lied there and watched. And a lot of fraud going on, according to a lot of officials. Attorney General Jack Conway announcing sentencing for a former regional coordinator at Mount Comp over in Prestonsburg. Richie Farmer was sentenced to Jackson County. Officials literally pulled out of a fiscal court meeting this morning and placed in handcuffs for charges of fraud. And also an arrest of a Louisa Bank president on child pornography charges in your calendar. And so much more to continue in just a few moments. We'll begin with just quickly... As was expected, former commissioner of the Kentucky Department of Agriculture, Richard Dwight Farmer Jr., was officially sentenced today to 27 months in federal prison and one year of supervised release for misappropriating public resources during his tenure in office. U.S. District Judge Gregory Van Tatenhoff sentenced former, excuse me, sentenced Farmer, the former agriculture commissioner, for theft from a program receiving federal funds. And in addition to his prison term, he's also going to be required to pay more than $120,000 in restitution to the Commonwealth and a special assessment of $200 on top of that. Judge Van Tatenhoff released Farmer on his own recognizance and ordered him to report to prison to begin his sentence on March the 18th at 1 p.m. Now, at a later date, the Bureau of Prisons will determine to which prison he is going to report. Regardless of which one it is, he will have to serve at least 85% of his sins. Since then, U.S. Attorney Kerry B. Harvey has issued a statement that reads in part, This sad episode now concludes, but we hope that it sends a lasting message that neither political power nor celebrity plays anyone or places anyone above the law. The public has been well served by the dedicated law enforcement officers and prosecutors who prepared and prosecuted this case. Now, during his guilty plea back on September or in September of 2013, Farmer admitted that he misappropriated a total of $120,000 and $120,500 to be specific. He did so by hiring friends who didn't do the work that they were to do, outlined by the job classification, couldn't justify their salaries, and he also purchased a great deal of items for personal use with Kentucky Department of Agriculture funds, including but not limited to rifles, rifle cases, knives, gift cards, and other items which he kept for himself. In neighboring Johnson County, as was expected last night, the Johnson County Fiscal Court went with their plan to cut $125,000 from the Johnson County Sheriff's budget. Sheriff Dwayne Price says he's now going to be forced to lay off two employees as well as a clerk in the next few days, the Johnson County Fiscal Court approved the first reading of a budget last night that cuts a little more than $125,000 from the department's budget by a vote of 3-0. to zero. All county commissioners voting were in favor of the cut. While Sheriff Price says that the county judge is politically motivated, the county judge says the county just doesn't have the money to give over to the sheriff's department. The budget gets a second reading at the next fiscal court meeting in a month's time. And I can't say good news, maybe a little word of hope for a lot of Paintsville and Johnson County residents. They've been without water for days. Crews with Paintsville Utilities say that they're working very hard and they've made some progress, but still close to 800 customers without water service in Johnson County this evening after outages resulted after several water main breaks caused by all that sub-freezing weather. And it's been slow to get back on in all areas. For residents who have water that has just come on, you're asked to conserve to help the system build back up. And officials say that they hope to have everyone back on by tomorrow or within the next 24 hours thereafter. 
Local headlines begin after this. Love is in the air at the seasonal shop with something sweet for all your hearts. With cute $5 or $10 custom valentines perfect for the kids at school and other adorable cuddly candy bouquets just perfect for everyone. And they've got the finest in Whitman's chocolates and more ways to say I love you than you can imagine throughout the store. Fashionable and fan favorite handbags and jewelry for her. Absolutely anything and everything UK for him and even Big Blue for the cutest of valentines. And just in, sassafras burlap designs in monogram doormats and garden flags to say welcome. All this and so much more only at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. This is John at Premier Motor Sales in Paintsville. I know everyone out there is not going to spend four or $500 a month on a payment on a used car. If you come to Paintsville, that probably ain't going to happen. Because at Premier Motor Sales, we sell quality used cars at a fair price. Here's an example, a 2005 Toyota RAV4. We had it listed for $98.50, just marked it down to $88.50. It's going to be a great payment vehicle. So if you're looking for a good buy on a used car or truck or SUV, come see us. Call us at 297-4121. Start off the new year with some brand new duds. Regardless of how hard you have to work or how hard you want to play, if you're stepping out or if it's what you're stepping in, Red's Boot Barn has got you covered with work, play, and western boots by Muck, Ariat, Red Wing, Blackjack, and more, and winter and western wear by Wrangler, Ariat, Miss Me, Outback, and Carhartt, just to name a few. Happy 2014 from everyone at Red's Boot Barn in Salyersville. It's so new it doesn't even have a name, but it does have an amazing taste all its own. Four pancakes, butter, syrup, plus your choice of any of our dozens of DQ toppings with a little whipped cream on top and, of course, some of our world-famous DQ soft serve. And you can add bacon, sausage, or even a little country ham for a full-blown breakfast treat. So sink your taste buds into a quarter or even half-pound grill burger fixed exactly like you like. And you want to know the best part? James says you can have either one for breakfast as early as you want, but only at your Sagersville DQ. Hi, I'm Don McFarland, and I want to be your family lawyer. Sometimes we all have troubles in our life, and when we do, it's good to have a friend that you can call on and during times of legal trouble. Please give me a call. I have been here my entire life. I was born here. I was raised here. I have a family here, and I've practiced law here since 1994. So if you ever have pain, if you ever have trouble, if you're ever in need, then pick up the phone and call Donald Wayne, 349-9000. From time and money saving services like their overdraft protection, telephone and online banking services, to finding the right home, college or car loan, to personalized checking and savings accounts designed around your exact needs, Sagersville National Bank is still your best choice and the same locally owned and operated bank that's been looking out for your family's financial health since 1902. Sagersville National, restoring the piggy bank population one savings at a time. Police Chief Matthew Watson tells me that as he was leaving the Sagersville post office last night, which of course sits adjacent to the Sagersville Fire Department, he heard a voice calling, one that for a few moments was faint and unrecognizable, but soon thereafter he says he realized that a woman was lying in the parking lot pleading for help, not just from the fall that she had apparently suffered, but also from the theft that had reportedly taken place at the hands of what she described was a male who, instead of rendering aid, decided to ransack her car. A correction, Watson was actually leaving the Sagersville Fire Department and Police Department, which is just across the way there from the post office, last night when he heard the cries for help. He says, a still unidentified woman, after being tended to, says that she had fallen exiting the Sagersville Post Office, and then, instead of rendering aid, a male passing by opened up her car and stole a bottle of medication. Last night about... About 6 o'clock, I was getting ready to go to the ball game for high school. And when I came out of the fire department, uh, heard someone holler for help. And first, you know, it was real low and, and almost couldn't hear. And as I started to get into my car, it started getting louder and louder. And I, I just happened to look over and seen a silhouette laying on the, the ground at the post office. Uh, we ran over there. She had failed when she came out of the post office. And she said that she's laying there, 
that a person came up uh, she didn't know. He, uh, she asked him to help her up. He, he just walked by her as if she wasn't there and got in her car and stole a bottle of medication. I think she said the medication was Lyrica. I don't know exactly what that's for. But uh, so if anybody has any information, they can call the police department or the sheriff's department and we'll try to go from there. But they almost did transport her to Bobby Hall last night. It was a short, slender build person. Uh, she couldn't really see that good. Uh, it was raining. She was laying on her back. So she really couldn't tell who it was. She didn't know. She also told Watson that she made eye contact with the unidentified thief and asked for his help, and then he simply ignored her and proceeded on to her vehicle where he stole the prescription medication. If you were in the area last night and may have seen someone of that description, contact the Sagersville Police Department at 349-2409, or you can always call 911 or simply call us and forward any information you would like. If you'd like everyone to know what you or your organization has going on, it's as simple as listening in on our community calendar, which, as always, is brought to you by McGoffin Farm Bureau. First, a reminder from the McGoffin County Senior Citizen Center that this Thursday is Commodity Day for all seniors on the active list. Pickup time is Thursday, 1230 till 230. And a reminder, the number of boxes to be given out has been cut by 12 boxes due to budget cuts. So those members who were receiving two boxes per household will now only be able allowed to pick up one box. And that is, once again, Commodity Day at your McGoffa County Senior Citizen Center at the Lloyd M. Hall Community Center in downtown Sagersville, Thursday at 1230. This is from Program Director Marlene Howard. And Revival is beginning to start. Well, it, let's, let's start that over. <laughs> Revival will be starting this Thursday evening at 7, the first of three nights at New Life Worship Center. Thursday, it is Pastor Shannon True Love of the Full Gospel Assembly of Hartford, Michigan, ministering. Then Thursday night, uh, it will be, excuse me, Friday night, it will be James Rudd. And then Saturday night, Pastor William and Lisa Perkins. And you are invited to bring yourself, your family, your friends, and be blessed at New Life Worship Center. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 7 p.m. nightly. Quick reminder, there's still time. It won't last forever. If you've got some old, unused, unneeded eyeglasses, drop them off at the McGoffin County Senior Citizen Center during the week. They'll soon be collected by our friendly Ola Cole and then donated across the world, to seriously, around the world, to individuals who so desperately can use them and have no access to any of any sorts. Strawberry and grafting rootstock orders are basically open until the end of the month at the McGoffin County Extension Office, 349-3216, if you want to call and place yours, or you can always stop by. And pretty much the same goes for us. You can always call, stop by, phone, fax, email, find me on Facebook, however you want to do it. Just get it here if you want your announcement on the news. It's free of charge as always. And as always, we love birthdays and anniversaries as well. So get them to us. Next funeral service announcements brought to you by our friends at the McGoffin County Funeral Home and McGoffinCountyFuneralHome.com. With services to be held in honor of 58-year-old Jerry Lee Combs of Coon Creek here in McGoffa County, who passed away on the 11th, the son of Anna Mae Combs Stevens and the late C.J. Combs. Besides his mother, he's survived by his wife, Peggy Lynn, sons Jerry Michael and James Christopher Combs, and daughter Jillian Lee Combs Williams. Visitation is for the remainder of the evening, and it will continue tomorrow until services, which start at 1 o'clock with both visitation and services from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Bur burial will follow thereafter at the Jerry Combs Cemetery on Coon Creek. And we've also learned of the passing of 67-year-old Linda Sue Salyer of Sagersville, who passed away on the 13th, the daughter of the late Oscar and Edith Sherbine. She survived by her husband, Danny Neal. Also, sons Kenneth Lynn, excuse me, Keith Lynn Carr, my apologies, stepson Michael Keith Salyer, daughter Catherine Lynn Carr Snyder, and a stepdaughter Ashley Michelle Salyer. Visitation will start at 8 o'clock this Saturday morning, and then services will begin that afternoon at 2 o'clock, all of which from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Burial will follow services at the Bruce Arnett Cemetery at Lakeville.
faster, friendlier, family-owned Parkway Pharmacy. Open 8.30 to 6.30 Monday through Friday in the new McGoffin Medical Plaza under the care of local pharmacist Jesse Rudd. To make Parkway Pharmacy your pharmacy, come by or give us a call at 349-4400. At the end of every race, Mark Martin hangs up his driving gloves. He hangs up his fire suit. And he hangs up his helmet. Which is why he picks up his phone and opens the ER Extra app. The app shows ER Extra wait times, locations, and more. It's the one safeguard Mark Martin is never without. ER Extra at Paul B. Hall Regional Medical Center. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Howdy, Hatfield. I reckon I'll take my pig back. Ain't your pig. Yeah, it is. No, it ain't. Yeah, it is, and I can prove it. Ma, I just sent a picture of our missing pig. Tell everybody it's time to start feuding. Oh, for heaven's sake. I guess ain't gonna be no feud. Real nice picture, though. We'll put it on Instagram. Appalachian Wireless is 4G. Great pictures, video, text, and talk. Bigger savings, better service. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. Game time means wing time at Lee's, and that means it's time for you to try our new buffalo wings. I can't tell you our secret, but I can tell you they're marinated and then rolled in our famous, albeit a little spicy, crispy chicken batter and served up with any of our seven delectable sauces. So get your hands on a meal or a box today at your Sayersville Lee's Hamus Recipe, where no one does chicken like we do chicken. As we get ready to embrace a bright new year, we'd like to take just a moment to wish you and all those you know and love the safest, healthiest, and happiest of new years from your home away from home for short-term rehabilitation or long-term nursing care needs, all with a standard of excellence and a tradition of caring. Happy New Year from Sagersville Nursing and Rehabilitation. The 2014 Terexes are in with a newly redesigned 800cc power plant and a new two-seat configuration. And the XP1000 is on the ground. 107 horsepower and a world-class suspension. Plus Polaris financing as low as 2.99%, 5.99 for up to 72 months. But it's only good till the end of the year at Conley's Kawasaki and Polaris of Paintsville. Kentucky Attorney General Jack Conway today announced the sentencing of a former regional coordinator with Mountain Comprehensive Care Center in Prestonsburg on charges involving forgery and fraud. 49-year-old Kathy Jo Ryan was sentenced in Franklin Circuit Court on Friday after pleading guilty to four counts of employee aid to other to defraud an assistance program. Now, Conway says a joint investigation by his Public Integrity Special Investigations Branch and the Kentucky Office of the Inspector General revealed that Ryan had been forging doctor's notes and information on applications for the Heart Supported Living Grant in November of 2012. The Heart Supported Living Program provides Kentuckians with disabilities the help that they need to live successfully in a home of their choice and to participate in their community. Now, according to the investigation, Ryan helped secure funding for renovations to her own home instead. Now, the report reads, in part from Conway, Ms. Ryan used her position to take advantage of state-funded program funds that many citizens rely on. She was ordered to pay nearly $65,000 in restitution within 90 days. She also received a probated five-year prison sentence. Franklin County Commonwealth's Attorney Larry Cleveland handled the prosecution for the case. And Attorney General Conway has announced an indictment of a Lawrence County man, specifically the president and CEO of Louisa Community Bank. Conway's office says his cyber crimes unit today announced that a Lawrence County grand jury has indicted the president and CEO of Louisa Community Bank involving charges of child pornography. On January the 10th, he says the grand jury indicted 68-year-old Edgar Heard him on four counts of distribution of matter portraying a sexual performance by a minor and one count of possession of a matter portraying a sexual performance by a minor. Purdom turned himself in at the Lawrence County Sheriff's Department yesterday afternoon. An investigation by General Conway's cyber crimes investigators began in February of last year following an undercover lead. A search warrant was reportedly executed at Purdom's home in October of last year with the assistance of the Lawrence County Sheriff's Department. 
and distribution of matter portraying a sexual performance by a minor and possession of matter portraying a sexual performance by a minor, minor are both Class D felonies, each punishable by one to five years in prison. He was lodged, as where that photograph originated, in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center as of last evening and then released sometime thereafter on a $5,000 cash bond. He is to be arraigned on those charges on the 24th day of this month. Two Jackson County officials, another Kentucky judge accused of fraud, were arrested today, literally taken out of the fiscal courtroom during or soon thereafter a fiscal court meeting in handcuffs on charges of corruption. At first, it was Jackson County Judge Executive William Smith, 73 years of age, who was arrested just as the fiscal court was about to go into executive session and led from the fiscal court meeting in handcuffs. He was one of actually two county officials who were arrested today on corruption and other charges. Moments after his arrest, 33-year-old treasurer Beth Sally was also taken into custody by the Jackson County Sheriff. She charged with engaging in organized crime, tampering with public records, forgery, falsifying business records, and abuse of public trust, more than $100,000. Same charges apply to 73-year-old Judge Executive William Smith. The Jackson County Detention Center has confirmed that both were held there for a period of at least a few hours and then released on their own recognizance per a judge's authority. It's just the latest in a long-standing rift between Sheriff Denny Heyman and the judge executive, as well as other officials. The sheriff, meanwhile, says that other arrests are pending as the investigation continues. As for the judge and the treasurer, they'll be in court next on February the 3rd for arraignment. Now, I was there last night as the Lady Hornets hosted Sheldon Clark here at home. Uh, to be honest, I had to go get a series of x-rays after my little fall out in front of the office the other day uh, and was out of the office, so I don't have it edited. But you want to be sure and look for it tomorrow on the, not, on the program. We'll have some highlights, some updates, and I uh, hope to get a few words from head coach Scott Castle about where the Lady Hornets are this season. And you'll definitely want to tune in because it's the last time you're going to see them for a little while. Yeah, the girls' schedule kind of is as follows. They're at Breathitt County this Friday night, and then they're, uh, they're on the road the 20th, the 23rd, the 25th. I don't think the girls are back home until the 27th, if I'm not mistaken. And that's going to be a, uh, yeah, hosting Lawrence County the 27th. So we'll have highlights tomorrow. As for the boys, they've also had a schedule change, just to let you know. I think they were uh, to be at home this Thursday night. That's been changed. They're at South Floyd tonight, and the 17th, they'll be on the road. They're not home until the 21st, which is next Tuesday. So after we get to the highlights and an update on the Lady Hornets tomorrow night, it's going to be another dry spell before we're back to home. They have been on the road more than they have been at home this season thus far, but the season's not over. And we'll get in on some home action hopefully very, very soon. So for now, we'll put a lid on it and wrap it all up with your Licking Valley RECC forecast. We had a pretty mild evening last night. I had 43 for the low this morning. That's not very low. 57 for the high. I told you earlier at the start of the show, like you didn't already know, it was gorgeous today. It's all going to be followed by some showers. Uh, really getting into the viewing area mainly after 2 o'clock in the overnight and early morning hours, a low of 28 degrees, which means, haha, well, we're not going to see that 28 exactly after 2. We'll see some rain likely around then, uh, and then it's going to be some snow after that initial onset of wet stuff. It appears to turn white thereafter. So look for the rain to start it all off. Ultimately, though, we'll hit that 28-degree mark or around about, and then we'll see a change over to snow. We are under a winter weather advisory for during the overnight and early morning hours tomorrow. A winter weather advisory for snow showers. It actually starts at midnight, goes to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And like I said, those rain showers will change to snow tonight. And actually, the latest update that I've just gotten in front of me says by around 1 o'clock, we should start to see some changeover. And accumulations, an inch is possible for a lot of folks, a less than an inch accumulation for a lot of others. Impacts, heavier snow showers, of course, could reduce visibility. It's going to be a blustery situation, and it's just going to be kind of wintry 
to the tune thereof. So a winter, wife, winter weather advisory is in effect due to a quick moving cold front that's going to pass through and then change things up into your Wednesday. There it is, mostly cloudy, 40% chance of snow showers as a fast moving cold front slides into eastern Kentucky night and tomorrow. We'll see below freezing for daytime highs tomorrow on your Wednesday. We'll see winds gusting upwards of 21 miles per hour and some snow showers possibly lingering around until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. There is the possibility of a snow day tomorrow. It's possible. Don't count on it. Never bet on the weather, but it's possible. It's likely that it's all going to clear up and leave us with mostly sunny skies and a high of 38 on your Thursday. Winds starting to calm from the south, southwest 3 to 7 miles per hour. So it's going to be pretty much on average. It's on par on Thursday, mostly sunny and pretty decent. A low of around 29 degrees Thursday night. Another round of precipitation rolls in in the form of snow. Uh, no accumulation expected, but just enough to remind us that winter is indeed here, and it's going to hang around. Friday, a 40% chance of snow. We're not going to get above freezing. We we'll probably will equal the freezing mark, but we're not going to go past it. A low of 17 as winter weather gets a better grip on us by the end of your work week, and that 40% chance of snow showers continues throughout Friday evening with a slight chance on your Saturday. Partly sunny and 31, a low of 19. Temps are just going to kind of stay in it there, hang around, and not go anywhere for a few days on end. Sunday, wrapping up your weekend, 39 and 25, and mostly sunny, so a decent end of your weekend all in all. We'll start off Monday, which is Martin Luther King Day, and a day off for a lot of folks. 46 degrees and Sunday, sunny on next week as we begin Monday. Thereafter, it's back to another chance of some light snow and temps in the upper 30s. Winter not once, but <laughs> just all over the forecast. But some sunshine in between, so it's not all bad. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you back here tomorrow night for more news that you'll only see with me. Good night, and thanks for watching.